I don't have any diamond matches. If you want a video about mistakes that happen in the diamond, I need diamond matches. Also, give me a follow on the Twitch if you are interested in the ranked round reviews. Link is in the comments and in the description. With that being said, let's start with the platinum rank up video. Link of all 39 reasons why you cannot get to the diamond. Check out the description. Attack blunders and starting off with the preparation phase. Preparation phase drones. In the background clip, you will see a round that could have been finished by rushing for a site. Why weren't they able to do that? Because there were no preparation drones watching who goes in or off the objective. Four players roaming and one in the site and attacking Arsenal and Church. Truth to be told, I thought that Platinum players would realize the importance of the early and the late drones, more than below ranks. Having preparation phase drones inside of the building, like with the coastline clip now, the taker will not lose his second drone, or even the first drone, if he had prepped drone in the sunrise. As a matter of fact, he will most likely have a free kill on the sunrise defender, as they have no idea that they are being spotted out. Mind that, at least 90% of the background clips are free, 4 or 5 stack. They will talk more about the coordination later on. Speaking about the preparation drones, understand who puts flank drones and who puts an active drone in the preparation phase. And how to roam clear video was put on the top right, check it out. It is a must for platinum or higher. Monty putting an active drone. Why supports putting a flank drone is not ideal. I have made a drone guide video, make sure to check all the links in the description. One final background clip about the preparation drones will be by the customs of border. Instead of putting a nice drone in there, they went to risk their drone for no reason. Knowing that custom is clear at the very start helps you to push ventilation, CCTV and the lockers. All three rooms to push. Speaking about the drones, let's talk about them in the action phase. When you're about to start droning, you should never throw drone in the room that you suspect a defender to be, like on the cafe's clip. Throw a drone in a safe area and then drone in. Or if you're repelled, throw a flash followed up with the drone. Someone instantly killing your drone gives you minimum intel. Speaking about the cafe's clip, you really should not be fighting the shield as thermite if your whole team is around bakery. What I also have found is that the moment you people found someone, you will immediately get off the drone and try to kill them yourself, like on the cafe's clip. What you have to do is have an eye on the Kaid, and since he's stuck due to both open walls, he will eventually die. Let your teammates deal with him. You going off the drone just make your information going gold and Kaid being on unknown position. The issue here is, when you stopped watching Kaid, even if he died, you cannot call to your teammate what he is doing. Is he going for the prep, bakery for a breach, or trying to go back to the safety? If he killed the guy covering the prep, he will be in a severe advantage just because you have tried to deal with him instead of having eyes on them. Pay attention when pro players drone someone in a room that defenders are not aware of. The droner will stay on the drone till defender gets killed or retraded. The easiest kill in the siege are when your opponents are not aware that they are being watched. Very similar while Echo is a broken operator. In the background, pro clip, you will see a next level drone doing the same thing as I mentioned. G2 knew that someone is in the closet and Doka will just watch smoke. This means he's stuck in the closet, as long as someone is watching the drone. Droning is an important aspect of the game, and that is why I will talk even more about droning now. Wishes. If you don't know what to do, and you should never be in that state, I have text guides as well as video guides on how to attack or defend on the most ranked maps. Start droning. At least be somewhat useful during your thought process of what to do, like on the coastline clip, or when you're pushing. Sure, you'll get two kills, 
but this is an example of when you have won something over opponent's mistakes. Or in the Banks clip with the Monty, you have one player watching breach, I don't know why, and another one on your top flank. Put a drone on the top, so the top server stairs guy can be on the drone and doesn't need to aim with the gun to stop your flanks. Oh, so I have seen a few times, not that much as in gold or lower, that you are wasting your drones or over droning. There was no need to check for the statuary, you get zero knowledge for that. What you should do is call that no rotation is by the astronomy to the trophy, which is very important, because you can get very easily astro control. I will touch two more things, there were plenty more, but I highlighted these. The first one is not understanding how to play an operator, and more precisely, Termite and Montaigne, with a smiley face on Zofia. Let's just quickly check Zofia once. As you can see, no commentary required here. For the Termite, when you're going to open a wall, make sure to already know which new angles you will form. In the background clip, Termite after blowing up the cooking wall will blow up the prep wall making him super vulnerable from the cooking breach. In the same round, you will want to start a plant but in an exposed place. Knowing the angles you are going to, as well as your teammates ones, is required. For Monty, your ideal starting point is when your back is covered, which is not in this clip. This was the four roamers one anchor round, by the way. Someone is at a cache, and your back fully exposed to that angle or even garage. Or on the yellow stairs, you cannot push solo there. Coordination issue will be pointed out in the overall blunders, but just check how your teammates are separated. Zero coordination in a 4 stack. Playing operators in a bad way usually is because, for example, Monty solo pushes and nice works in a lower ranks. You have been either told by another content creator or your friend how to play an operator in a specific rank, and not how you should play operator. Not playing him correctly leads to the loopholes to your strats, that can be easily abused. The other thing is nonsense plays, you're not required to throw flashes for no reason, exposing yourself for the entire process, or you don't need to push Kaid as Monty due to your team being able to plant in the arsenal, and Monty throwing a drone in the blue and blocking off the doorway. Or going from the T2 to T1 and back to T2 for no reason, as well as pushing through the attic with the last two people. You both are in a disadvantageous position. One huge thing I have seen is randomly moving left to the right when holding an angle. Never do that when you're facing horizontal angles. You're making yourself way out of cover when doing so. This is one of the reasons of you dying behind the cover, as explained in one of the videos in the description. Defend blunders, and let's start immediately with the drones again. When you're playing operator with a utility that does not have much stuff to do in the preparation phase, like dock in the background, then one of your target in the preparation phase is to find and destroy the prep drones. There is no reason running around with bandit as in the background clip, if you could check for the default drones to be put. As a matter of fact, putting your belly chargers after the preparation phase is totally okay, in order to spend a few more seconds on drone hunting, and not running around the rosy. With all this being said about the drones, I'm starting to worry if Platinum people don't understand the use of the drones. If you want to advance further, you need to start understanding why droning for the attacker is important, and why you should spend your preparation phase hunting them. See this smoke in the Pro League, making a rotation in the attic just to destroy a drone in the T1, and then reinforcing the rotation back. The moment you understand why that was a smart move, then you are going in the right direction of knowing why you should drone. What also made me question Platinum Rank is utility investment, using useless barbed wires like on Cafe, or barricaded door that should not be barricaded. Let me stop here.
The reason why you don't want to barricade this is you're letting the takers to know that they won't be contesting if they're pushing for the red. Also, you can see the whole kitchen wall being reinforced on coastline or a goo mine instead of the barbed wires. Like, what is the point of a goo mine if you're putting it in the barbed wire? Is it because when a taker melts the barbed wire, he will be good? There are way better ways to utilize goo mines. I have also seen a five stack nearly bunkering themselves in the border, four inside and one in supply. You are essentially giving attackers the whole map in no time. Or even worse, very low of utility investment of the site. I promise to talk about this in this video, and I will touch just a little part of it. But I think I will go more in depth in that in the Diamond series, if you get enough Diamond rank matches. So, exactly in the border situation, when both of your objectives can be attacked from the above, then you need at least two, if not three people on the top. This also works into some objectives like on Oregon, Kids Dorms. There are two ways of holding, and one way is to have three two split hold. Do you want to learn more about the Oregon hold? Head on to the description for how to defend Kids Dorms. This wasn't you, but your teammate, Barricading Fontaine, gives office and Fontaine control for attackers. This might be okay if there were 30 seconds left, but there is 1 minute and 40 seconds remaining. Similar thing but in the action phase. In the bank clip, you are playing a 2 vs 4 now, as you are both isolated by the admin hatch and the castle barricade that you have put. I have seen plenty of risky plays that were not calculated. Don't get me wrong, you should do risky plays. But you have to calculate these. For example, running past the kitchen hallway as Clash, knowing that someone is in the kitchen is a very dumb idea. Or trying to flank someone as a Clash, if you know his exact location in the last 25 seconds is also a bad idea, because you can easily push him with the shield. I know that 4 vs 1s are boring to wait, but you will eventually lose these. So don't play as monkey in already won rounds. Also, if you are being asked to do something like to open the top floor hallway hatch, you don't need to go through all possible angles on bank to open it. Even if opening it is already a questionable decision, there were situations that you were not aware of the angles, like the roof angle on the coastline or wants to be healed and runs for the several different attack angles. For final blunders, they will be overall. Coordination is a huge part of your loss. In the clubhouse clip that we have already seen, everyone is pushing from everywhere. Two attackers are occupied with the strip, Monty with Finca pushing for the stock and Jackal kitchen hallway. Why is there are two more roamers around the top and one garage? When you're spread like that, you have too many vulnerable spots. The moment you, as a whole team, know what to do in a situation, you're having way fewer breakpoints. I have recently made a video of how to roam clear on the clubhouse, step by step on the default rank setups. Make sure to check it out on the top right corner. We have also commented the consulate one. Jackal is the visa, nomad, lobby. And you are performing a yellow push alone the console. You cannot attack both sides simultaneously. Have a plan, either push meeting with the Jackal and Nomad from the admin, or let them rotate over the console connector and the toilet window, from where you will be killed by Maestro. Or in the coastline, but this was a solo queue. You had to have an angle on the kitchen's hallway. Jaeger has the kitchen window. Or Let's talk about the opening walls which were pretty funny, not gonna lie. If Maverick is opening on the side, you have to repel on the opposite side. If he gets picked, he won't be picked from the garage, but from the top red. We will end the coordination part with the failing to open up the locker's wall with Thermite, when you have everything required to open it. In Platinum, you're expected to know how to deal with the bandit tricker. Benny Tricker in the most situations should not stop you from the opening the vault. He should only delay your push and waste utility, like using frags or Zofia impacts from below. Understanding communication means you understand how the map is played. This means if both walls in the blue are enforced, 
You call that immediately, as you can get the Insta Blue Control. One thing that I didn't see done at all is abusing the melee or bullet hole mechanic, especially when covering the flanks. Instead of having guns pointing to the yellow hallway on the theme park, have a melee hole over here and you will be very safer. I will talk more about the bullet hole and melee hole mechanic in the diamond series, if we manage to get one. Generally speaking, you're taking the wrong decisions or bad assumptions in the Oregon clip. It is a 1 vs 1 and the last defender is in the bedroom. That is known. The least thing what you want to do is plant near or by the door of the games. And that will exactly happen. You have two choices. Push the guy or plant by the kids or big window. Lucky that he couldn't hear you planting just next to him. You also cannot assume that gym or especially office toilet is clear because these are hot areas for the cavera mains. Due to a similar reason, a mate of you will die. Taking wrong decisions also means forcing the excuse of bad timings on you. There is no reason to reload in the middle of an unknown area. Take a step back in the safety, by the yellow stairs, and reload the gun. You're waving your hands so the bad timing can strike on you. It will eventually happen if you try enough, but don't try enough. Two more things about the wrong decisions is, whenever you see a barricade and want to open it, shut it down. Do not melee it unless you know 100% that no one is there. You could have been killed in the borders clip. And the final one is, since you get a kill that went to the blue stairs or try to cover the flank, continue your flank to the archives. You have impacts. You don't want to be stuck in the servers due to admin hedge being opened. Few more random stuff. Not pre enough, especially if you saw a drone scanning you. Sure, nothing happened in the clip, but you should have prefired the pink entrance door to the outside. You also should have prefired the spot behind the bomb. There is usually a guy there. Pause the plant or by the window. You don't need to see people in order to shoot. You pre-fire them. A small issue is the technique of quick picking when going back to the cover. Do not lean on the opposite side. You're not achieving anything with that, but just leaning on the opposite direction. Making angles works against you. The final thing that I will touch here is, pick operators for a reason. In the following clip, you used bandage charge on the wall that don't need a bandage charge. You're better off playing with another operator. A very similar thing happened with the Twitch. In 3 out of 3 rounds, people barely use their drone. I can't talk about the gun preference, but in the Platinum or higher, and in a stack, just having a good gun will make you grind to the diamond and higher way harder than picking an operator with a gadget and a gun. If they use Twitch drone for something useful, I will not comment this. Okay. So, if I don't get enough demo rank rounds within the next month and a half, that episode will be postponed, and I will make the final episode of Copper to the higher ranks. Thank you for watching this video and staying with me for this long, and thanks all the patrons and YouTube members for making this video available. If you want to learn all the basics and advanced things about the siege, make sure to give me a like, subscribe and click notification bell to get all notifications from my channel. Make sure to give me feedback down in the comment section below.